Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me. Uh, Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And uh, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Well, before we do get started, I do want to let you know this program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. And in particular, I want to thank Anne uh, so much for sending along a one-time uh, gift through PayPal. And also Chris, who uh, be- is a new Patreon supporter uh, at the Detective Sergeant level, which is $7.14 a month. Uh, obviously, a little bit of a tribute to uh, Joe Friday. Uh, you can support the show either a uh, one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net, or every month at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Uh, but now it's time for today's episode of Nick Carter, the original air date, March the 14th of 1948, and the title is The Case of the Last Old Timer. Our winners... Yes, the winners in the second big jingle contest will be announced today. So listen now while new post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, I'm getting cramped hiding under this desk. Do you really think he's coming? $50,000 is pretty tempting bait. And he sounded plenty interested over the phone. Well, if we only had a light in here, maybe I... Quiet. Uh, listen. Someone's forcing the window. Hold tight, Betsy. I think that's our man. <laughs> And now, the case of the last old-timer. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. If you ask Waldo McGlynn, crime isn't what it used to be. No, sir. Give Waldo the good old days when Nick's father, Sim Carter, was one of the country's leading detectives and his right-hand man was Waldo McGlynn. Those were the days when crime was crime. But today, at Nick's office, Waldo's audience isn't very attentive because Nick is inspecting a new camera and Patsy is finishing some letters. But Waldo still holds forth on his favorite subject. I tell you, Nick boy, we had real criminals in them days. You didn't catch them fellas by using a microscope and a lie detector. No, sir, you had to stand up. Nick. Anything else? Oh, uh, no, thanks, Patsy. Hey, you know, with a fast lens like this, I could down here take pictures in the dark. Uh, Gone it, Patsy. I wish you wouldn't interrupt me. Now I forget what I was saying. Oh, that's easy. No, sir, you had to stand up and shoot it out. Hmm? Shoot first and ask questions afterwards. That's the way we work. Uh, I didn't and... say all that. Well, not yet, anyway. <laughs> but you were going to. Oh, I know that routine by heart, Waldo. I've heard it so often. <laughs> all right, laugh. Go ahead. But you'll find out I'm right. And before long, too. You know who got out of Sing Sing this week? No. Who? Nitro Nelson. That's who. The king of the safe crackers. Oh, yes. I heard my father talk about him. Yes, sir. Your old man and me shot it out with Nitro and his pal, Dan Brinkley, after they pulled that co and security job and killed the night watchman. Oh, I thought they got the chair for that, Waldo. No, only Dan Brinkley was executed. Nitro testified against him and got off with a life sentence. And they released him this week? Yep. Paroled after seven twenty-five years. Oh. So, Nick, you better Look out for the biggest crime wave this old town has seen for many a day. Well, I doubt whether Nitro is much of a menace anymore, Waldo. Well, hmm? the old boy must be past 70. Well, so what? He still knows more about cracking a safe than all these modern yeggs put together. You just give him a flask of nitroglycerin, and he will... Waldo, fly. those methods are out of date. Modern safes can't be cracked as easily as those old-timers. Okay, okay, you just wait and see. All right, Waldo. I promise to call on you the very first time I get a case involving a blown safe. (laughs) 
Nick Carter speaking. Uh, hello. Uh, this is Cornelius Jones of Jones Fisher and Caraway. Oh, yes, Mr. Jones. Somebody broke into our offices here at the factory last night. Murdered the night watchman. Got away without payroll. Well, have you notified the police? Well, of course, but well, we'd like to have you on the case, too. Will you help us out? Okay, I'll be out there in 30 minutes, Mr. Jones. Splendid. Oh, by the way, where was the money? In a safe? Of course it was. The thief got it by blowing the door of the safe clear off its hinges. <laughs> What did I tell you, Nick boy? What did I tell you? One case doesn't make a crime wave, Walter. Uh, just the same. Oh, Patsy, you have the camera, haven't you? I sure have. Well, here's Mr. Jones's office. Come on. Very well, Lewis. I'll take two safes of this QS2 model. I want delivery as soon as possible. I'll have them for you inside of a week, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, I'm Nick Carter. Oh, come in, Mr. Carter. Come in. Thank you. This is my secretary, Mr. Bowen. Hello, Mr. Jones. How do you do? And my assistant, Mr. Waldo Aloysius McGlynn. How do you do? How, How do you do? do? Meet Mr. Lewis of the Hercules Safe Company. Mr. Lewis? How do you do? Hercules Safe Company, huh? You investigating the robbery, too, Mr. Uh, Lewis? No, no. I'm a salesman, not a detective. I just sold Mr. Jones two of our latest models, one for the factory here and one for the downtown office. Mm. Wish you'd sold them to me before this thing happened last night. Well, you can't see I didn't try, Mr. Jones. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Jones, would you mind showing me where the safe is? I'd like to take a few pictures. Pictures? Yes, I'm testing a new camera with a special lens for detail work. Say, that's quite a camera, Mr. Carter. May I see it? Certainly. Help yourself. Mm. I've read about these, but this is the first one I've ever seen. Well, F-14 lens, that's unusual. Golly, I'd like to have one of these. Yeah, well, you get those new safes here by Saturday. I'll buy a, a roll of film. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be here, Mr. Jones. Uh, come on, Carter. I'll show you where the robbery took place. You can get all the pictures you want. Well, there's the safe, Mr. Carter. Uh -huh. The police have been over everything, of course. Oh, gee, that is an old-fashioned safe. Yeah, I'll say it is. Hmm. Modern safe couldn't have been blown open so easily. Thief must have used nitroglycerin, too. See where he plugged up the cracks with soap? Hey, let me ah. take a look and look, Nick Boy. Yeah, go ahead, Walter. Go ahead. Hey, Mr. Jones, where was the night watchman's body found? Oh, just outside in the corridor. He was uh -huh. shot. The janitor found him when he opened up this morning. Nick Boy, this is one of Nitro Nelson's jobs, if I ever saw one. Oh, Walter, you've got Nitro Nelson on the brain. I know what I'm talking oh. about, Patsy. In the old days, we could recognize the work of every big-time safe cracker in the business. Well, if you're right, Walter, we'll find out pretty soon. I see the police have been dusting for fingerprints. And it looks as though they've found plenty. Yeah. Well, as soon as we're through here, we'll go down to headquarters and check with Maddie. <laughs> I'm waiting for a report on those fingerprints now, Nick. And when it gets here, you'll find out I'm right, Matty. Oh, yeah? Uh, this takes me back 25 years. Nitro killed the night watchman on that job, too. According to court records, his partner killed him. You could never make me believe that. Dan Brinkley wasn't the killer type. But Nitro swore Dan did it, and the court believed him. Oh, are you at the trial, Waldo? Sure, sure, Nick. I had to testify. Oh. Yeah, I remember how sorry I felt for Dan's wife and kid when the judge passed the death sentence on him. It's funny why their faces keep sticking in my mind the way they do. Oh, that's probably the report, Nick. Sergeant Matheson, homicide. Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay, Peterson, thanks. Waldo, I gotta give you credit, huh? You sure called the turn this time. What? You mean those were Nitro Nelson's fingerprints, Matty? As plain as day. What did I tell you? In spite of his age, the old boy must be pretty spry to pull a job as neat as that one. Well, okay. And you mark my words, this is only the beginning. Nick boy, you're up against a real crook this time. <laughs> Patsy, it doesn't seem possible. Three more safe robberies in five days, and all of them exactly like the first. Nitro Nelson, Nick Boy, just like I told you. Well, I can't argue with you anymore, Waldo. He found his fingerprints on every safe. I can't even get a lead on him. The day Nitro left prison, he must have gone directly to some hideout. Yes, I know, Patsy, I know, but where, where? Uh, you know, ever since we saw that first safe he blew, I've had a feeling that there's, there's something I ought to remember. Huh? Something in my mind keeps going back to that courtroom 25 years ago. Well, when you remember what it is, let me know, Waldo. You gave us the right steer the first time. Maybe you can do it again. And 
Mr. Carter. When I opened up the office this morning, this is what I found. Uh-huh. A cracked safe with the door blown right off its hinges. And almost $40,000 in negotiable securities gone. Where's the window open as it is now, Mr. Harris? Yes. Nothing's been touched. Oh, but Nick, this is the top floor. Whoever cracked that safe couldn't have got in through the window. No, but he could have lowered himself down f- from the roof with a rope. Oh. In fact, Miss Bowen, it's the only way he could have got by our watchman without being seen. That'd be quite a trick for a 75-year-old man. Not for Nitro Nelson, Nick. You know, if he'd only waited till next week, we'd have our new safe installed. I'll bet not even he could crack that. <laughs> hey, Patsy, huh? come here. Oh, what is it, Nick? What does this look like to you? Found it here on the floor, in front of the safe. Why, it... It looks like a bit of gelatin. That's what I thought. Gelatin. I think we finally hit on something. Nick! Yeah. Nick, boy, I got it. What, Walter? What I was trying to remember. But I ain't sure, so so let me work it out on my own. Well, yes. shouldn't you tell Nick so the two of you can work it out together? Nope, I got to do this myself. Just give me 24 hours, Nick, and if I don't find Nitro's hideout, then I'll tell you, okay? Well... Oh, all right, all right, Walter, but be careful. Sure, I'll be careful, but I caught that old son of a gun once, and I can do it again. Maddie, flash that enlargement of the fingerprints on the screen again, will you? Okay, Nick, but what's the use? It's exactly the same as the prints of nitros we have on file. Sure it is, no question about it. I know, I know, but... Yeah... Every whirl, every loop, every ridge is there. What's bothering you, Nick? I'm looking for something that isn't there. Uh, huh? Something that isn't there? Oh, just a minute, Nick. Sergeant Matheson, homicide. Where's that? 347 Hillside Road, eh? How long ago? Okay, I'll run out and have a look. Yeah, I'll leave right away. Okay, Thompson. Trouble, Sergeant? Yeah, Somebody found a dead body in the cellar of an old house out on Hillside Road. You want to come along, Nick? All right, Matty. I can finish up here when we get back. Come on, Patsy. The body's down in the basement, Sergeant. This way. How did you happen to find it, Mr. Wilkins? Uh, it was out in my backyard when I heard a shot. I live in the next house down the road. Yeah? And then a minute later, I saw somebody run out of here carrying a suitcase. He jumped into a car and beat it fast. So I came over to see what was up. Was the door unlocked? Yes. It was wide open. Well, I thought that was funny, so I kept looking around, and finally I found this dead man in the cellar. You didn't move him, did you? No. I just looked from the top of the steps. Then I run and called you. This, uh, the basement door? Yeah. He's right at the bottom of the steps. See? There he is. Good grief. Nick, look. Great Scott. It's Waldo. At the foot of the cellar stairs in a deserted cottage, Nick's old friend and assistant, Waldo McGlynn, lies stretched out with a bullet hole in his chest. Now, back to the case of The Last Old Timer. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Sergeant Matheson took Nick and Patsy with him to investigate a report that a body had been found in the basement of a cottage on Hillside Road, only to discover that the man who was shot is Nick's old friend and assistant, Waldo McGlynn. A few minutes later... Well, I managed to stop the bleeding at least. I'm afraid he doesn't have much of a chance. Hey, Maddie, when will that ambulance be here? Any minute now, Nick. I suppose Waldo was following that clue he spoke about when he came yeah, here. Probably. I wish now I'd made him tell me just what it was. Oh. Even if he recovers, it'll be days before he can tell us what happened. Hey, Nick, there's something over here I'd like to show you. If we can leave Waldo for a minute. All right, all right, Maddie. There's nothing more to be done until the ambulance arrives anyway. What is it? Here, behind this partition. Take a look. What? Why, those are safes. Yeah. Four old-fashioned safes. And each one has the door blown off the hinges. How do you know? Uh, Mr. Wilkins. Yes? You know who lives in this cottage? Well, yes. I own the place. And about a month ago, I rented it to an old man named Triplett. An old man? How old? Why, he must have been 70, 75. Hmm. Hard-boiled old gent, too. Huh? Felt like one of those gangsters in the movies. You see, Nick, it was Nitro. This is the hideout we've been looking for. Well, how about those four safes, Mr. Wilkins? Do they belong to you, too? No. I never saw him before. Well, how well did you get to know this, Mr. Triplett? 
Why, I, I didn't get to know him at all. The fact is, I haven't even seen him since he rented the place. Hey, Nick, I've been looking at those safes. Huh? You know, only three of them were blown open. The door's wide open on the fourth, but it's not damaged. Yeah, I noticed that too, Matty. Probably the fourth one was used to store the loot from the robberies. But why would he have four safes and then blast three of them open? Well, he was practicing, Patsy. Hey, look. It took three attempts to get this first one open. It was still a clumsy job. Yeah, but the technique was better on this next safe. Uh, he did a perfect job on the third one. Well, I get it. After 25 years in jail, the old man had to do a little practicing in order to get back his skill. <laughs> Come over here, Matty. Yeah. Bring your flashlight. Okay. It's pretty dark in this corner. Why don't you find something else? Throw the light down here on the dirt floor. Okay. Hey. You see what I mean? Yeah. The dirt isn't packed down as hard as it is in the rest of the cell. Better get some men out here and start digging. Right. What for, Nick? Wouldn't be surprised if they find the body of Nitro Nelson. <laughs> Careful, boys. Lift them out easy. Why, that's Mr. Triplett, the old man who rented my house. Maybe it was Mr. Triplett to you, Wilkins, but he was Nitro Nelson to the police. But, Nick, it can't be Nitro. Look at the body. It must have been buried there for at least a week. Perhaps even longer, Matty. But it's still Nitro. Well, that's impossible, Nick. Those robberies started less than a week ago, and you know Nitro did them. You found his fingerprints on every safe. Yeah, and fingerprints don't lie. Well, if they're not lying this time, Matty, the only answer is that the robberies were committed by a ghost. And you don't believe in ghosts, do you? Nick, please, give with some answers. How did Nitro's fingerprints get on those safes after he was dead? Well, Patsy, you know what happens when you develop photographic film. Well, only in a general way. Why? Well, film is covered with a thin layer of sensitized gelatin. Yes, I know that much. Okay, then. When the film's put in a developer... The developer turns the exposed part of that gelatin black, and it eats away the unexposed part. Go ahead. I'm still with you. Now, suppose a photograph of a fingerprint were printed on a very thick layer of that gelatin. Uh Uh-huh. And it were left in an extra strong developer until all the white spaces between the ridges were eaten away as deeply as, as say, a a thirty-second of an inch. Why, I suppose the black part, the ridges of the fingerprint, would stand out like a, a rubber stamp. Exactly, Spatsy. Like a rubber stamp, made out of gelatin. Then somebody took a photograph of Nitro's fingerprints and made one of those gelatin rubber stamp things out of it. Yes, see? Oh. I began to wonder when I found that bit of gelatin on the floor by the safe in Harris's office. Uh-huh. Must have broken off when he put the prints there. Then, when we enlarged the prints at headquarters just now, I was sure. Yes. Uh, you said you were looking for something that wasn't there. What did you mean? Patsy, see, there are pores in all human skin. But not in gelatin. No matter how much we enlarge those prints, there wasn't a single pore mark. That's why I'm sure the fingerprints were faked. Well, all right, so we know Nitro didn't rob those safes, but who did? I want you to phone all the companies that have been robbed. After we've made those calls, I think that'll give us the answer to your question. <laughs> This is Cornelius Jones of Jones Fish and Carrowing. Oh, yes, Mr. Jones. Uh, about those two safes I ordered from your company. Yes? Could you possibly deliver one of them this afternoon? Oh, I'm afraid not, Mr. Jones. But I, I've got over $50,000 in cash and securities here that just came in, and the banks are closed for the day. Now, all we have is that old safe in our downtown office. I, I don't trust that anymore. I'm sorry, Mr. Jones. That old safe will have to do until tomorrow night. But before then, I'll take care of everything. That's our promise. <laughs> Do you really think he's coming? Fifty thousand dollars is pretty tempting bait. And Jones said he sounded plenty interested over the phone. Well, we only oh, had a... Listen. Someone's forcing the window. Hold tight, Patsy. I think that's our man. All right, don't move. I've got a gun on you. Oh, the... Turn on the lights, Patsy. Right. Mr. Lewis. Yes, but perhaps he'd rather be called Mr. Brinkley. So you know, do you? I do. 
Your father was Dan Brinkley, wasn't he? Yes, Dan Brinkley. The man Nitro Nelson sent to the electric chair for a killing he did himself. That's what Walter was trying to remember. Huh? Walter was at Brinkley's trial, and he recalled the resemblance between you and your father. Yeah, who's Waldo? He's Nick's assistant. The man who trails you out to the cottage. The man you shot, Brinkley. And he may die. Well, what did you expect me to do? He ran down the stairs waving a gun and yelling for me to give up. Sure, I shot him. Then I grabbed the stuff out of the safe and beat it. Well, you're not going to beat it this time. I'm not. Look, you think I'm going to the chair like my father did? You don't have any choice. No? Well, look at what I've got in my hand. What have you got in that bottle? Nitroglycerin, sister. Oh. You take a shot at me, Carter, and we'll all be blown into a million pieces. So put that gun away. You won't get away even if I do, Brinkley. This whole place is surrounded. This is the end of the line for you. Okay, then it's the end of the line for all of us. Oh, don't throw that bottle, don't! Here it comes! Ah! With all his force, Brinkley hurls the bottle of nitroglycerin directly at Nick and Patsy, preferring to die with them rather than be captured. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the last old-timer, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. Nick and Patsy trapped George Brinkley as he was about to blow open the safe of Jones, Fisher, and Caraway. But Brinkley holds a bottle of nitroglycerin above his head and says, Okay, Carter, this is the end of the line for all of us. Don't throw that bottle, don't! Here it comes! Ah! Oh, my head! The bullet only grazed you, Brinkley. Stop whimpering. Oh, but, Nick, they're going to be... Any explosion? No, Patsy. When he threw the bottle, I, I managed to catch it. Oh, gee. Oh, we're still lucky it didn't explode. Yeah. Oh, brother, I never want to do that again. Neither do I. Oh. Well, come on, Brinkley. I want you to meet an old friend of mine, Sergeant Matheson of Homicide. <laughs> Are you sure it's all right for us to see Waldo today? Sure. The nurse said he was conscious and asking for us. Good. Ah, here's his room. Oh, hi there. Oh, hello, Waldo. Hi, Waldo. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. Hi, Patsy. Oh, Nick, boy, there's something i got to tell you. That salesman for the safe company. He's, He's Dan Brinkley's son. Hey, well, you I... trail him to that cottage on Hillside Road well, and he shot you. Yeah, we know all about it, Waldo. We uh, caught Brinkley last night. You, you did? How? Well, to begin with, I couldn't believe a man Nitro's age could pull those jobs. Oh, but Nick, boy... What's more, I figured those jobs were pulled by someone who knew where there were old-fashioned safes that could be blown open by Nitro's out-of-date methods. So when two of the victims mentioned buying new safes, Nick figured that a safe salesman trying to sell them new ones would know all this. And it didn't take long to find out that Brinkley or Lewis had called on all the victims. Sure, but... And when I discovered the secret of the phony fingerprints, I remembered Brinkley's interest in photography. But photography? How, how does that feel? Oh, we'll tell you later, Waldo. After you feel better. It's enough right now to tell you that Brinkley's mother brought him up hating Nitro Nelson. So when Nitro got out of jail, Brinkley was there to meet him. And Nitro didn't recognize him. That's why he agreed to teach him his methods of safe cracking for $1,000. But after Brinkley learned the technique, he strangled the old man and buried him in the cellar of the cottage. So it, it wasn't Nitro that blew them safes after all. Sorry to disappoint you, Waldo. But you can credit the younger generation with those jobs. Uh, I guess that's why you caught him so easy. In my day, you had to stand up and... Shoot it out. Shoot first and ask questions afterwards. That's the way we work. <laughs> All right, laugh. Go on, laugh. Oh, Waldo. And now... The winners of the four 1948 Super Deluxe Ford V8 four-door sedans in the second new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser Contest, which closed March 6th. Stand aside, Mike. I'm doing the honors here. Okay, Nick, go ahead. Friends, it gives me great pleasure to announce that brand new 1948 Fords were won by Mrs. M.T. Bird of 16 Lexington Avenue, Needham Heights, 94, Massachusetts. Mrs. J.M. Bramlett of 1825 A Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. Mrs. Frida Carlitz of 94 East 57th Street, Brooklyn 3, New York. And Mrs. F.D. Long of 208 Northeast 4th Street, Galva, Illinois. 
And to these lucky people, let me say, may you have many happy hours of driving pleasure. Yes, and let me add, to all these Ford and other prize winners, congratulations. And be sure to listen next week for more winners. But now, Nick, how about next week's adventure? Well, Mike, next week we're going to look for a piece of rope. That's right. One you could buy in any hardware store for a dollar or two. And yet two murders were committed because somebody wanted it. Yes, and after the killer got his hands on it, he didn't want it anymore. So he gave it away. Well, this all sounds very mysterious. What's the name of the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Magic Rope. Nick Carter, presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy, Ed Latimer played Matty, and Humphrey Davis played Waldo. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. The Campfire Girls, the homemakers of tomorrow, are having an anniversary this week, and to them, the Cudahy Packing Company says, Happy Birthday, and many happy returns of the day. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Andrew Ryan's with otrwesterns.com, where we stream live old-time radio westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, with a special twist. You select the tracks that get to be played. We've got a thousand different episodes from shows like Gunsmoke, Tales of the Texas Rangers, Escape, Gene Autry, and many more. Come check us out at otrwesterns.com slash live. Again, that's otrwesterns.com slash live. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio with Adam Graham. And now, let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Uh, poor Waldo gets to the uh, right place quite a ways ahead of Nick and even almost gets himself killed in the process and still gets made fun of at the end. Um, I honestly do have some mixed feelings on this story. Uh, for one thing... Um, I think that the true identity of the criminal was tipped uh, early on with the new safes coming in. Uh, that uh, basically seemed you know, pretty obvious that uh, he would be the one involved. I also thought the resolution to the cliffhanger was uh, really iffy. Um, it, it was certainly pretty interesting in a typical Nick Carter situation, but no cleverness or uh, anything that's usually associated with these uh, revo- uh, with these uh, solutions. Just basically uh, Nick Carter using his amazing powers to stop that. So, yeah, not one of my favorites, but again, I, th- I think a pretty interesting premise, and it was nice to see. Waldo, at least, uh, headed in the right direction throughout the story. All right, well, that will do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And then next Thursday, uh, it's another case with uh, the master detective Nick Carter. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook.